This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's Nerd Wallet, the comparison site that lets you make choices about credit cards, travel cards, travel itself, student loans, and more. We've got the whole story from founders to venture capital to the upcoming IPO this week. Nerd wallet. A lot of people call them a lot of different things. There's a lot of different descriptions for them. I call them a Yelp for financial services. I've also seen writers and articles that have been written about them use that as well. Nerd wallet, way back in the beginning in 2009, was founded by these guys Tim Chen, who went to Stanford and got an economics degree, and Jacob Gibson, who went to MIT and got a mathematical or applied mathematics degree. So both these guys were really smart. And they got together to form and build. Nerd Wallet. The concept started when Tim Chen's sister called him and said, Hey, Tim, I'm traveling to Australia. Would you happen to know where I could figure out where the best credit card for that is? Currency conversions, travel needs, things like that, easy replacement of cards, all these things that go into a travel car. He said, Sure, let me look it up and get back to you. And as he was looking for answers, he couldn't find anything satisfactory. And boom, the light bulb went on. And with $800 to start the company, Nerd wallet was born. The company started doing comparisons of credit cards to help consumers make a decision. And it all came out of that exact question from Tim's sister about the best card to use in Australia. So with $800, as I mentioned, they get going on a website. They're focused mostly on millennials, although they were really just trying to make it work. But it turned out it was millennials that were looking for trustable information. In the early days, they were basically this website trying to attract traffic. And at some point in time, they were tripling traffic month over month. But nonetheless, this was really content where they would be presenting analysis and everything. And the key point there was a differentiator, which was still alive to this day, is that they weren't owned by a bank or a banking institution or a banking intermediary company. They were merely an independent website trying to honestly make analysis stories and editorial to help you, me, and his sister going to Australia make good decisions about which credit card to get. Well, it expanded in categories, and so they went along, like sometimes early stage companies do, and they managed to bootstrap it and made money on ad sales and things like that, eventually getting up to 70 writers in about the 2015 time frame when they would go out and actually get their Series A. The Series A was $64 million and it closed in May. Then there was this little $5 million that closed in October. I think it was an add-on or something. And then $36 million in debt. So in other words, if you raise $64 million and you're not spending it tomorrow morning, you can get $36 million, 50% of that. So, and that is not equity. There may be some warrants or some equity kicker that goes to the, uh, uh, the debt providers or those that do it, whether it's a commercial bank bank or individual note holders. But nonetheless, this is a way using debt to give up less equity. So that all happened in May. And they were already now about 10 million monthly visitors. Now that's a healthy amount of visitors to a website. So you've got ads and other things that are happening there. And you can see how that attracted the Series A. So this $100 million would be the only money that nerd wallet would raise. And so if you take a look at where they're going, they take the money, they start growing, they start pushing, they bought another company called About Life. And then in 2017, unfortunately, they had to lay off about 11% of the business. Now, Tim Chen talks about this and he talks about the pain of doing that because if you take a look at Nerd Wallet and you can go read some articles about them, they are very, very focused on their culture. They have a lot of specific underlying principles that matter to them. They are also focused on the inverted funnel that you worry about the customer, you worry about the company, then you worry about your team, then you worry about yourself. But the customer is up there at the tip of the pyramid and it funnels back down to you the individual is last caring about yourself after you care about your team after your team helps you build the company and the company is serving at the top of the pyramid the customer i love the attitude they take about customer but nonetheless he talks about he that the culture of the company and his personal you know pride really took a hit and it was very difficult to go through the layoffs here and 
in 2014, you know, a couple of years prior to this, you know, Jacob Gibson, who was COO at the time, left, and there was a COO that came in. I think he worked for LinkedIn. Did he work for LinkedIn, the new COO? Right. Well, he was there for a little bit. And then Jacob has gone on to be a venture investor. And there's a lot of values based investing. So if you look him up on LinkedIn and other places, you're going to find that Jacob, after leaving here, kind of has some of the same characteristics of nerd wallet, of caring about the customer and caring about the end individual and being sort of a values based investor. Nonetheless, Tim Chen has assembled a team and has hired other executives, attracted them to this wonderful culture, and off he's going. But this was a really tough thing to have 10 million monthly you know, visitors, you're making money, and then you come up here, you, you raise 100 million in venture capital, and then you miss your marks and you have to lay off 11% of the company after you had acquired about life. That's tough to do, but it shows that he was making the tough decisions. Now, a tough decision, sometimes you have to lay off and make these tough decisions to get to the next point. And hats off to him that he didn't simply go out and raise another $50 million in venture money, burning negative rather than trying to keep the company profitable and drive it. I, you know, I applaud that. As painful as this was, as difficult as this was, especially if it was for the affected people, that I think is a boss move when you're moving forward, trying to keep the profitability and drive your company forward. Well, over the next five years, they would grow significantly. Now, we, I just talked about they bought About Life. Then also in 2020, they bought Know Your Money from the UK and also Funderma, which put them in the SMB world. So now you had a lot of this content is for not only consumers like you and me, but for SMB small businesses, a realtor that's got maybe a staff of two. That's basically a very good example of an SMB that might be very concerned about credit cards and financial instruments for their business. So nonetheless, they come up here to 2020 and they've moved it up to 21 million uniques. Now you might say, how are they making money? Well, one of the things that they did admit is they say, we've got ad revenue, but we also have matchup fees. In other words, we're not owned by a financial service company like maybe a Capital One, so that everything we do is going to be directing you to Capital One. No, they are neutral. However, the neutrality, and they're very open about this on their website, is influenced by matchup fees. And they get matchup fees for credit cards. So if there's two substantially similar credit cards, but one has a slightly better matchup fee, they are probably going to be guiding the consumer to that one. However, they need to protect their brand. And if they were to suddenly be referring people to credit cards that were horrible interest rates and bad features and tough to work with, that would get around. So there is a balance of don't screw with your brand if you happen to be favoring one matchup or success fee or affiliate fee by whatever name, you're collecting money when you make a referral and that referral actually results in a person getting that credit card or whatever other product it is. So here they are at 21 million uniques. They're at $245 million in sales for 2020, 228 million 2019. That's pretty, that's smoking. That's doing very, very well. And five years from where they had a 500 million valuation, that was the company's valuation when they raised this $100 million. Five years later, it's 10X as they're looking at a $5 billion valuation target at the time of the IPO. And there's only one word for that, and that is damn. Five years on a 10X increase in your value is really doing something. And sure, there's some social nets out there that have gone from 3 billion to 6 billion in one year, but this is a company that is actively building content. They got like 70 writers out there and an editorial staff building content, attempting to give you analysis of credit cards, investing options, insurance, student loans, banking, travel, mortgages, personal loans, all these things that are in the financial services sector so that you and I can make a better decision and trust Nerd Wallet being the neutral brand, even though we know there is an affiliate fee there, we hope that that affiliate fee is not going to influence the choice too much, that our choice based on their recommendation is going to be good for us. And now here we go to an IPO with a $5 billion target with a quarter billion dollars in revenues each year, and you have yourself what I believe is a sustainable go forward company. So let's take a look. You know, this has taken 11 years to get from here to here. But what lessons 
are there for you and me? Probably some good ones when you think of the fact that this wasn't some high-flying tech company that raised $300 million, $400 million, or billions of dollars if Tiger Global gets involved. No, these guys were running this website, providing advice and analysis. The lessons, I think, is focus. He focused almost by default. We're just gonna do credit card analysis is what I set out to do to answer a question from my sister who is going to Australia. Then natural expansion. As they master the content and the analysis of one, it's very easy to master it on others. Hire a few more writers that have experience in a sector and then analyze it and present content for you and me that's useful and timely when we need to make a decision about one of these things. So the natural expansion, I think, comes there. And then go alone if you can. Here's what I mean by that. If it is possible to take your $800 and the money you start making and avoid giving away equity, then when it's time for the IPO, you have a huge amount of the ownership that's still with you and your founders, or better yet, that you can turn into stock options for your employees to reward all the people that have been on the big ride with you. So going alone if you can, I love the fact that the Series A was one third, two thirds, you know, uh, equity and debt. Now, underneath the covers, there could be some warrants and things for this debt. However, when you do it this way, it is not nearly as much dilution as it would be if it was $100 million in pure equity. So I really like what is done here. The S1, which is the public doc, if you're really bored and you want to read those kind of things, at sec.gov in the United States, you can find the S1, which is the disclosure from Nerd Wallet of everything that they legally have to tell you and me when they're about to go public. And their ticker symbol, I've heard it's going to be nerds because Nerd Wallet loves to refer to themselves as nerds. If you need advice on a credit card, Call the nerds. That's kind of their kitschy little slogan that goes with it. And I happen to like it. I love doing this case study. I love going online and checking out some of this stuff here. I thought it was incredibly valuable. If you're looking for one of these products and you're looking for a neutral source, I really applaud what Nerd Wallet has done. That's what I think about Nerd Wallet, but what do you think? Leave me a comment down below. I answer as many as I can. And while you're there, please subscribe to Valuetainment, the best channel on the internet for entrepreneurial content, such as case studies from the BizDoc. And while you're there, hit the bell so you get notified every time there's a new piece of content up here. We love building value for you, and we want you to know when it's coming. If you like this Nerd Wallet episode, perhaps you'll like this one from the BizDoc Archive. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.